So it's a case of 45 year young male brought in casualty with sudden unconsciousness with hypertension and CT scan suggestive of right capsule ganglionic bleed extending into the ventricles with the massive intraventricular hemorrhage. The GCS was E2 VA M2 with pupils reacting and cough and gag reflex present. Considering the massive intraventricular hemorrhage, control of hypertension was done and then patient shifted to OT. Uh, bilateral bore hole with VD was planned. When we tapped the ventricles, there was no CSF because the ventricles, the clot was completely full. Hence, we planned for endoscopic evacuation of the clot. So, this is after the insertion of the endoscope, the outer sheath and through the dry field, trying to suck the clots into the intraventricles. This is entry into the right lateral ventricle. The clot was evacuated with the suction in a dry field. So the entry point was just pre-coronal bar hole. So we can see here we are into the ventricles and we are suctioning the clot with a suction under complete vision. So now we are going a little bit posterior and then sucking through the right lateral ventricles. Now again going anterior and lateral trying to identify the foramen of Monroe. The suction pressure has to be gentle, avoiding damage to the intraventricular vessels. So here with the scope zooming in, zooming out, we are able to have a good clear vision of the clot and we are able to suck the clot. So after the wet field, we start putting the ventricular endoscope and start irrigating with the ringer lactate. The continuous irrigation of ringer lactate cleans the ventricular wall and helps in identifying the foramen of Monroe. So we can see here the choroid plexus. Once we see, we again reinsert the sheath, working sheath and try to suck out the remaining clot. So this is the anterior part of the right ventricles. We can see the clear clot evacuation has been achieved. The foramen Monroe Mornic Fornix can be identified. There is some clot in the fourth ventricle, uh, third ventricle. So we are again go back with dry field, achieving the dry field, going into the ventricle and evacuate the clot from the left side of the ventricles. And again we go and start irrigating with the ringer lactate to complete evacuation. We put a feeding tube number 8 into the ventricles and see the clear flow which will be kept in the post-operative period. On other side, we keep a OMI reservoir which helps us to keep the CSF tapping in the long run. 
this is the post op scan we can see one side with the feeding tube and other side is a roma reservoir there is a good clotting equation from the left side posterior horn of right lateral ventricle there is some persistent clot which was not evacuated because trying to evacuate that may lead to damage this is the post op scan at day 10 so near complete